Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Nevada Pain Network, where we bring you anything and everything educational for pain management. Today the topic is the basics of migraine headaches. A migraine is a chronic headache that affects people from a few hours upwards of 72 straight hours. It's a complicated recurrent headache disorder that is <clears throat> most common in women and those between the ages of 15 and 55. And typically with age, migraines become less severe and less frequent. Migraines affect 18% of women and 8% of men. 30 million people in the U.S. have at least one migraine each year, and every 10 seconds, somebody in the U.S. goes to the ER with a migraine. It is genetic. 70% have a first-degree relative who suffers from migraines. And we know that if one parent has migraines, 40% of the time the child will suffer. And if both parents have migraines, 90% of the time the child will suffer from migraines. More than 90% of sufferers are unable to work or function normally during their headaches. There's a lot we don't know about what causes migraines. We do know there's a genetic component and there's also some environmental factors. We also know that imbalances in brain chemicals are a leading cause of migraines. Low serotonin can trigger a migraine by letting too much blood flow through vessels that should be constricted and this can induce a throbbing sensation. There are quite a few migraine triggers that we know about. Foods such as aged cheese and red wine both contain tyramine, which is a known migraine trigger. Beer, whiskey, food additives such as nitrates. Cold foods, citrus foods, MSG or caffeine. Elevated stress has been known to lead to migraines. Weather changes such as barometric pressure drops. Even strong scents such as perfume or paint. Hair accessories, such as pulling the hair into a ponytail, um, exercise, poor posture, skipping meals, and even smoking has been shown to be a migraine trigger. One thing we do know is that it's a myth. Chocolate, there's no evidence to clearly substantiate that it is a trigger of migraine headaches. So that's a myth, and that's very good news. Symptoms of migraines, it often involves unilateral head pain that is throbbing and aggravated by activity. 20% of those who end up with a migraine have this aura at the beginning and that can involve photophobia which is light sensitivity, phonophobia which is sound sensitivity, or visual scintillations. There's really no objective testing available to diagnose migraine headaches. A CAT scan or an MRI can rule out badness like a tumor that might be masquerading as migraines. A lot of times it just comes down to patient history and pattern of symptoms. A migraine journal such as you see here can be very helpful to see the pattern associated. The International Headache Society has um, come out with some criteria. A person has to have at least five attacks fulfilling three of these criteria. One is a four to a 72 hour duration. Two is at least two out of these four. Unilateral, pulsating, moderate to severe pain intensity, or aggravation by or causing avoidance of routine physical activity. And then the third criteria is at least one of these, nausea and or vomiting, and photophobia and phonophobia. A board of treatment options, which are options where you've already got the headache, you just want to stop it, mostly involves triptans. So, and that targets serotonin, so triptans will help with uh, blood vessel constriction. And you have things in here like Imitrex, um, Zomig, Frova, Relpax, they're all really in the same triptan family. Additionally, abortive treatment options include Midrin or Migridol nasal spray, such as you see on the right, Cafrigo, and then over-the-counter medications, Advil migraine, Excedrin migraine, or Motrin migraine. Additionally, there are narcotics that can be prescribed for abortive treatment options, barbiturates, and then nausea medications, such as Reglan, Compazine, and Phenergan. When it comes to preventive treatment options, the goal is to lessen the frequency and severity of migraines. So high blood pressure medications such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, antidepressants can be helpful along with anti-seizure medications including Neurontin, Topamax, Depakote, and then Sonomegran is a serotonin antagonist which can help. Uh, when it comes to interventional treatments, the FDA has approved Botox. These are given at three month intervals. And it's only a 10-minute procedure. It's injected into 32 sites around the head and neck. Uh, for chronic migraines, it involves a distinct and severe neurologic disorder 
characterized by patients who have a history of migraine and suffer from headaches on 15 or more days per month with headaches lasting four hours a day or longer. So they have very specific criteria for when to get Botox. And the large study they did that the FDA reviewed showed that those receiving Botox averaged eight to nine fewer headache days per month. Additional interventional treatments include occipital nerve blocks, cervical facet or epidural injections, sphenopalatine ganglion blocks, supratrochlear nerve blocks, supra or infraorbital nerve blocks, and pulse radio frequency energy. All of these may be indicated and help tremendously with migraines. A few studies to think about. There was one that looked at 100 patients receiving occipital nerve blocks and over half achieved pain relief averaging three weeks. This second study came out in 1992, and it looked at a lot of patients who received a mixture of lidocaine and steroid for a greater occipital nerve block, and over half of these patients received duration of pain relief over uh, six months, so very promising. And this last study on the slide shows a, a Caputi and Ferretto study that looked at peripheral nerve blocks in treating migraines, and they showed that over 80% had effectiveness for six months. The Nevada Pain Network offers the top pain management doctors in the greater Las Vegas area. They are migraine specialists along with other types of headaches, offering medical and interventional pain treatments. There are several locations accepting over 50 insurances with board certified pain doctors who've won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. The number to call is 702-323-0553, and the website is painmanagementlasvegas.com. Uh, call today for more information and scheduling. I'm Dr. David Green with the Nevada Pain Network. Your pain stops here.